Your readings, Reverend Holly, New Testament, Reverend Janet Flowers, the prayer of comfort, Reverend Janet Flowers, in that manner. You just hold to his hand. God, son, changing hand. You ought to hold to his hand. God, son, changing hand. You ought to be. Give the Lord another hand clap of praise. Come on, we can do better than that. In the book of Ecclesiastes, for our Old Testament reading, chapter number three, beginning at verse one, you'll find these words, to everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to break down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. Amen. Reverend Flowers here, Reverend Janet Flowers. Amen, amen. <clears throat> Our New Testament scripture is 2 Corinthians 1st chapter, verses 3 to 7, and it reads, Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comfort us all in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ are bound in us, so our consolation also abounded by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the adoring of the same suffering, which we also suffer. And whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. 
and our hope is you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall ye be also of the consolation praise the lord let us quiet our hearts as it's time to talk to our lord for he is a good god and he is the comforter during this time so he for he sent his holy spirit that he would dwell among the people of god let us pray most holy and everlasting father god the true and living god we bless you and exhort you and lift you up in this moment knowing that you are abba who art in heaven hallowed be thy name father we thank you for our lord and savior yeshua and we thank you for holy spirit lord we come to you right now asking you father god to be what you have promised the comforter we ask that you bless the wilkins family father god for we know that your word is the truth and the truth will make us free from all situations and all challenges father god doing this challenge where there has been a separation of a loved one father god we know that your word says to be absent from the body Hallelujah is to be with you, Father God. In this glorious state, in this peaceful state, in this time of sleeping for our dear loved one, Brother George, we ask, Father God, that you would quiet the hearts of the family, quiet the hearts of the friends, quiet the hearts today that your peace that surpasses all understanding will flow through us all in us your shalom when it goes through our body it brings peace so father god we are thanking you for your peace today that you would comfort the heart comfort the mind father god even comfort the flesh father we thank you for this gathering of your people father god may our hearts meet as they meet you father god for we know that you are love and love is above everything so as your love overshadow this place we will feel your peace and comforting today we ask that you bless the word that when it comes forth that hearts will be cultivated and ears will open up to hear what thus says the lord bless the children bless the grandchildren bless all that are here today in the name of Yeshua father we lift up our hands unto you knowing that all our help cometh from you the great shepherd and we like that last verse where it says surely goodness and mercy so family I just want you to know that goodness and mercy, even in this time of sorrow, it's all right to cry. Even in this time when you're walking through the life and remembering and reflecting on our dear loved one, that his goodness and his mercy will be following you all the days of your life. And you too will go this, on this path, knowing in our hope that he said, I go and prepare a place for you. If it was not so, I would not have said it. So believe that there is a place that we all gonna go. He said he's gonna shout. Hallelujah, and when he shout, hallelujah, those in Christ will hear. Those who are not, will not hear. And we'll all be caught up. So rest now, dear brother. Hallelujah. And wait to shout. This is just, hallelujah, your transition until the shout comes. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We bless you. We praise you. We glorify you. We honor you on this day. In the name of Yeshua, we pray. It's the only name that matters. For at his name, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that Yeshua, Jesus, the Messiah, he is Lord. Amen. We're going to have a selection there by Miss Tasha Wilkins. Put your hands together as she come forward, please. So I told my papa I won't go cry. 
Because my papa don't want me to cry. So I'm not going to cry. I will lift up my eyes to the hills from with cometh my help. My help coming from the Lord, the Lord which made heaven and earth. He said, He will not suffer thy foot, thy foot to be moved. The Lord which keepeth thee, He will not slumber nor sleep. For the Lord is thy keeper, the Lord is thy shed upon thy right hand, upon thy right hand. No, the sun shall not smite thee by day, or the moon by night. He shall preserve thy soul even forevermore oh my help my help my help all of my help coming from You know your help comes from the Lord. Can you give God a hand clap of praise? The acknowledgments. Wishing you God's peace. May the goodness of the Lord comfort you and may his loving presence in your life soothe your heart and ease your pain. With sympathy and prayers, love, Alexis. 
May warm memories of your father lighten your sorrow. It's hard to know just what to say at this sad time, but even though no words can truly comfort you, please know that please know that caring thoughts are very much with you. In deepest sympathy, Lolita and Steve. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. May God's loving presence comfort you, his perfect peace restore you, and his promise of eternal life sustain you during this time of loss. In sympathy and love, the Washington family. And to this family, on behalf of the management and staff of the Jan Wilkerson Funeral Establishment, we want you to know that weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. Your father and your grandfather is resting, and it is a blessing. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He's free. Now I should grab my you. You did a good job, baby. Put y'all put your hands together. Yes, you did. Amen. Amen. We're going to have another musical selection by Mr. Hamlin, followed by our eulogy for none other than the great Reverend Herbert Harley. He said he don't know who that is. <laughs> Pastor of St. John Baptist Church, Stony Creek, in that order. Amen. Bless you, Reverend Cherry. I don't know who the great one is except the Lord. Amen. Uh, we certainly thank God for uh, this opportunity to come. Amen. Amen. There are some other acknowledgments, two others. All right, come on, Sister Georgia. Amen, you wanna stay right there? All right. did so much I don't know where to begin you were there with me through thick and thin I miss you daddy hold on tight I'll see you again when it's not quite all right First, let's give God all the praise and all the glory, for especially for sharing the many years with my Uncle George. Uncle George was a man, a loving and caring father, great grandfather, and great father of all, and great uncle. One thing about Uncle George, you may not know, he loved his CB. And when he went by the hand of Little Boy Blue, when I went to visit Uncle George, he would always smile. And I came through the door knowing that I was about to tell one of him, tell him one of my off-the-wall jokes. He still would laugh at it anyway. But one thing Uncle Joe told me was about kids. He said, you can love your kids and do much for your kids all you want. There's always something come up where you ain't done this for me, you ain't done that for me. He said, live for yourself. Them kids gonna be here when you dead or gone or you gonna bury them. He said, they're going to be mad regardless if you're living or you're dead. And I said to him, I think, what are you talking about? He said, listen to what I'm saying. He said, you can love them kids and do for them, them kids all you want. But them kids going to do what they want to do anyway, regardless of what you do for them. He said, you're going to be dead and gone, they're going to be mad. You're going to be living, they're going to be mad. But one thing for sure, upstairs, our God, know in heaven, he don't care how you do. As long as you repent of your sin and do what he asks you to do. Don't do what them kids ask you to do. Do what he asks you to do. Well, Uncle George, I'm, I'm doing what you said to do. And this is your last signing off, little boy blue. Amen. Come on, let's give them a hand. We, 
we understand that it is difficult to speak uh, before people if you are not used to speaking before people and certainly at a time like this uh, we applaud you sister georgia amen uh, for being able to have the courage and certainly this granddaughter uh, for being able to sing and uh, the gentlemen there amen at such a time as this amen we know that to be absent from the body is to be present with the lord amen we take power in the word of god that says weeping may endure for a night but joy cometh in the morning sometimes it's hard to understand when morning comes because it's still dark in your situation but how many know that it, that even when it's dark it can still be morning all you got to do is hold on because after a while the sun is going to shine again anybody know that that's right today come on if you know that the sun is going to shine in your situation amen we ought to thank god for that amen uh sister georgia uh, amen uh, reached out to me and asked me if I would do something that I don't do much of anymore and that's sing amen I don't have much voice uh, I, I don't want to blame it on allergies but amen certainly they have played a part amen and me not having much voice but preaching a lot is, has definitely done it but we're going to do amen I told her I'd do the best I could under the circumstances is that alright amen amen we're just going to do a little bit of this I've had some good days I've had some heels to climb I've had some weary days and some lonely nights but when I anybody's testimony so I, I won't complain sometimes the clouds hang low and I can hardly see the road and I ask the question Lord you again for your goodness for your mercy for your love for your kindness 
for your presence in this place. We thank you because you said where two or three would gather together in my name, that you'd be in the midst of us also. Thank you, Lord, that even though we've come today to lay to rest George Wilkins, there are at least two of us who have come in your name. We've come, God, to glorify you. We've come, God, to magnify you. Even though we understand, we understand that some are crying, some are sad, because they've lost a loved one, a father, a grandfather, a family member, a friend. But God, there are others of us who understand this moment. And we understand to be absent from the body is to be present with you. And so God, we celebrate because we understand that everything's going to be all right. Give us power, give us your presence, but most of all, give us your peace. The kind that passeth all understanding, that guides our hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This is our prayer. This is our plea. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we all count it done. And all who love the Lord, say amen. amen. Say amen again. Amen. Wouldn't hurt to say it one more time. Amen. Come on, let's give the Lord another thunderous hand clap of praise because even in moments like this, he's still worthy to be praised. We honor God and the spirit of Christ and we're thankful for the opportunity to come to share in this homegoing celebration. Amen. This celebration of life, not death. Amen. Uh, life. Amen. Because we are all striving in this land of the dying to get to the land of the living. Amen. And so we, uh, we thank God for this moment in time. And to this family, uh, we want to let you know that earth has no sorrow, uh, that heaven cannot heal. Amen. Very briefly, in the book of Philippians, uh, the fourth chapter, uh, there is a powerful pericope. The, the Apostle Paul uh, is ascribed to have penned uh, the fourth chapter and beginning at verse number six very familiar passage of scripture that we're going to make a brief announcement about and then we're going to let you go uh, first Philippians 4 and 6 says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known unto God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen. For the time that is mine to share, I just want to talk just briefly uh, from the thought, the theme of the subject. How do we make it from here? Amen. How do we make it from here? Uh, that, that is really one of the questions that is all the time asked in such settings as this today. Uh, in the time where a loved one has transitioned from this world to the next in the time where uh, a person has lost their job or their income or lost someone who was close that they did not think they were going to be able to function without. You got to understand that death is a reality in the life that we live. Death is not a good thing physically to be able to ingest and digest, but if if you look at death through different eyes, you'll see that death is not a bad thing for a believer. Let, let me say that again because some of y'all missed it in the back. Death is not a bad thing for a believer. Death is really merely, when you look at it through spiritual eyes, death is merely a doorway. Death is really a form of deliverance. I wish I had a witness right there so you got to understand sometimes uh, when people go through on this side uh, and we pray 
and we ask God to heal and deliver and set them free. A lot of times God answers our prayer. He just doesn't do it in the manner in which we think he's going to do it. A lot of times we ask for God to heal our loved ones, to deliver our loved ones from whatever they're going through on this side. And God, you know, he does hear and answer prayer. Sometimes he answers your prayer with a yes. Sometimes he answers your prayer with a no. Sometimes he don't answer at all. Y'all ain't got to help me. But you got to understand that you got to be ready to receive whatever answer it is that God gives here as you pray for your loved one to be healed and delivered. God gives you a yes, but you don't understand the yes because he does not heal them in a manner in which you wanted them to. Sometimes he's got to take them to the other side and do what you told them to do. Here today, you got to understand God has shown us a form of deliverance. And so when you look at death, you understand that death is not a bad thing when you look through it uh, through spiritual eyes in order to see uh, what God is truly up to. And so whenever God transitions someone, whenever God uh, receives or takes someone uh, to a state to where uh, they are waiting on the trumpet to sound, uh, you got to understand that while they are waiting, uh, are, they leave behind some of us uh, who are going through travail, who are going through because we don't know uh, what tomorrow is going to bring. We don't know how we're going to function without daddy, without granddaddy, without uncle. How are we going to make it? What are we going to do now? That is always the question in families that are absorbing the initial shock of the news of the death. And let me just tell you, don't ever let news kill you. Y'all ain't got to help me. You got to understand that news is just a report. Y'all ain't got to help me. But I wish I had somebody uh, that would look at somebody and say, I'm going to believe the report of the Lord. Uh, this ain't the end. You got to understand, uh, death is not a period, uh, but it's merely a comma. It, it is a pausing point between life as we know it uh, to life everlasting. Uh, and so the answer today, uh, the Apostle Paul writes in this book of Philippians, as a matter of fact, here in the fourth chapter where the Apostle Paul literally blows my mind. Paul, as he's writing this letter to the church at Philippi, I won't hold you longer, but I've, I've gotten started now. I feel like preaching. Listen, as the Apostle Paul writes this letter to the Christians at Philippi, it's interesting because scholars have suggested that Paul was in a vicarious position. He was locked in a Roman jail, and he was locked there hanging in the stocks by his hands hands uh, in a play in a hole full of dung. Uh, a whole lot of people don't know what dung is, but dung uh, is a cute way of saying doo-doo. Uh, and so here Paul is uh, hanging in a situation uh, that don't smell good, don't look good, uh, don't feel good. Uh, and let me just contend today uh, that a whole lot of you can't make it uh, through tough situations because uh, you ain't got enough stink on you yet. Y'all ain't got to help me. Uh, but if ever you ever go through a situation that's hard to handle, where it don't smell so good, look so good, and feel so good, and the Lord brings you out, then that's a reason to lift up your hand and tell God, thank you. I wish I had somebody, even in the midst of a funeral, that can lift your hand and say, Lord, I might be going through now, but you brought me through before, and you ain't Paul, as he's hanging in this situation, here is what baffled me and blew my mind. He has the audacity, the gut, the gall, the nerve to say in this fourth chapter that I've learned to be content no matter what state I'm in. I've learned how to live with some stuff and without some stuff. I've learned to live when folk are talking about me and when folk loving on me. I've learned to celebrate even when I ain't got no money and when I got money in the bank. I wish I had somebody 
that knows just the mere fact uh, that you're alive today uh, is a reason to rejoice. I wish I had a real church. I wish somebody uh, would say just the mere fact that I got blood uh, running warm in my vein. Uh, I ought to be able to lift up my hand uh, and say I can make it uh, anyhow. I didn't mean to get started, but here I am. I'm out here now. And so the answer to the question is how are we going to make it? What are we going to do now to get through here? This text, these two scriptures that I read answers that question. He says, be careful for nothing. In other words, in life, you've got to proceed with caution. He says, don't be running into nothing. Don't be rushing into nothing. Don't go into anything blindfolded but you ought to go in with good sense and take your time. How many know that fools rush in and fools rush out? When you're going through, you might as well take your time and give God a chance to restore you and renew you and refresh you and give you the assurance that everything is going to be alright. I wish I had somebody in this place uh, that would look at the person next to you and say listen even though it don't feel like it right now uh, but I got a feeling you ain't gotta help that, that everything's gonna be all right uh, I, I just feel uh, God's gonna work it out uh, he's gonna bring us through this uh, and he's gonna bring us out of it he says be anxious uh, or careful uh, for nothing but not only does he say that he says uh, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Not only is Paul trying to tell us that we ought to proceed with caution, but he's also telling us to pray without ceasing. Let, let me tell y'all something. You may think you know everything, but you don't know more than God. I wish I had somebody. Listen, you may have matriculated at some of the greatest universities on this side of heaven. You may be, have gone to Oxford and become a Rhodes Scholar. You may be a PhD, DDD, DDS, DSD, DST, all of those Ds. But let me tell you something. You still ain't smarter than God because he's omniscient. That means he's all science. He knows everything even before it happens. And he knew this death was not a surprise to God, but he ordained it in the heavenlies. That's why you can't depend on on what you know and what Junebug and Pee Wee and Bonquisha and Shabluka and Shablaka know. You got to talk to somebody that knows everything. How we going to make it? We got to pray without ceasing. The Bible says men ought to always pray and not to faint. That means you ought to pray in the morning. You ought to pray in the noonday. You ought to pray in the midnight hour. You ought to pray when you can't sleep at night. Uh, that ain't the time to get up and raid the refrigerator. That's the time to get up and bombard heaven. So uh, I'm trying to behave myself but not only, not only the only way we're going to make it is we got to proceed with caution. We, we got to pray without ceasing. But then this text really gets hot to me. He says be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Oh Lord. I, I, with thanksgiving. I, I, I had to slow down and look at this again. He says pray and prayer, prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. So in other words, he's saying, not only if you're going to make it, do you have to proceed with caution. Not only do you have to pray without ceasing, but he's also saying, you got to praise him until he comes. So you got to understand that the only way we can make it is God's got to show up. The only way we're going to have the strength to get through tough times like we're living in now is that God got to be on our side. Look, Listen, listen, I've tried to do stuff on my own and I just failed every time. Anybody ever tried to work out your own salvation and your own life and talking about I don't need 
nobody. I ain't got nobody to help me. The devil is a liar. If you got breath in your body, God has been on your side and you owe him a praise for it. Oh, I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a church in here today that even at a funeral, you know he's worthy of you saying, Lord, I thank you. Yeah. If you look back over your life, we would have been here if it had not been for the Lord on our side. I wish I had somebody that ain't cute enough to lift up your hand and tell God, thank you. So, so. I'm finished, I'm finished when I tell you that the way we gonna make it through is family, we gotta proceed with caution. We, we gotta pray without ceasing and we've gotta pray him, praise him until he comes. And then he lets us know that if we do all of those things, if we proceed and pray and praise, he says, I'll give you something that can't nobody else give you. He says, and the peace of God that passeth all understanding. I, I, I looked at this, I ran forward and I, I, I couldn't understand it. I said, what do you mean, the peace of God? I, I studied it and it showed me that there are two types of peace. There is the peace from God and then the peace of God. The peace from God, Reverend Flowers, it, it is a temporary peace to get you through temporary situations. Well, sometimes you can do stuff that will calm you down. Come on now, some of y'all, when you get in tough situations, you, you go to the alphabet store. Oh, no, no, let me, let me know. <laughs> yeah. You, yeah, you, yeah, you go, you, you go, you, you, you go and get and uh, get you something to edible. I mean, eat. Y'all ain't got. I'm, yeah, yes, yes. Sometimes you'll do stuff that will give you a temporary peace. But you got to understand that peace will run out after a while and you'll come down or that'll work itself out of your city. Y'all ain't got to help me. I know I'm right about it. Y'all look at your neighbor and say, keep it real. He right, he right, he right. I can't wait till this over so I can go get me something to edible. Uh, I can't wait till I can go and get me some AB. Y'all ain't got to help me. Listen, I, I, but that's a temporary fix. But the, but the peace of God is what this text says that that's God's peace that, that's him giving you what he got and you got to understand whenever you get God's peace that means you can smile while all hell is breaking loose folk can be talking about you and laughing at you and you're still giving God the glory because you got peace that'll keep your head up high even when all hell is breaking loose so what we can do to make it through this is we can proceed with caution. We can pray without ceasing. And we can praise until he comes. And then his peace will carry us through. It'll make us better. Listen, there is nothing we can do today to bring George Wilkins back here. I don't care how many CDs you get on. You can call him Little Boy Blue, Breaker Breaker One Nine, for local information. Come on, all of that. <laughs> Truth is, he's not gonna answer. Nothing we can do to bring him back here. But there's good news in the fact that there's nothing we can do to bring him back here. We ought to warn him to rest on in the arms of the Lord. Y'all not want folk that the Lord has transitioned to come back to a world of sin and hatred and haters, murder and crime and sickness and disease, let him rest. But the good news about it is that we may not be able to bring him back here. But if we live according to God's will, his way and his word, one day we can go where he is. Oh, I wish I had a witness right there. How, how do we do that? And I'm finished when I tell you that we've got to learn how to love. Got to learn how to love God. And we've got to learn how to love ourselves. 
but also we got to learn how to love each other. Y'all know we can start the last one right now. Do me a favor and look at the person next to you and say, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. That was the wrong person. Look at the person on the other side. And say, I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. Some of y'all ain't said nothing yet. That's because you didn't want to lie in church. <laughs> if that's your story, just hit them and say, you all right, you all right. We gonna make it. We... <laughs> Amen. But how many know what the world needs now is more love? If we had more love, we'd have less homeless people. If we had more love, we'd have less hungry people. <clears throat> we gotta learn how to give love away. Like Jesus did it. He did it in the ultimate manner. He gave his life so that we might live. You can do the same thing for someone else. Family, we pray that the peace of God that passeth all understanding will guide you and keep you <clears throat> through Christ Jesus is our prayer. Father in heaven, again, we thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you've done, all you're doing. And all you're going to do we ask now that you keep this family that you touch them that you bless them in a special way and God we gonna give your name glory we gonna give you praise we gonna give you honor God whenever they miss their loved one remind them of your presence that you'll fill the void and you'll fill in every place that they feel empty this is our prayer in Jesus name and God I ask now <coughs> that someone here if they don't know you in the pardon of their sins don't let them rest till they come to know freedom in Christ Jesus this is our prayer in Jesus name all who love the Lord come on say amen together <coughs> These services are not concluded, but they will conclude with the interment at the Wilkerson Memorial Cemetery. If you are driving in the funeral procession, we ask that you fasten your safety belts, illuminate your headlights, amen, and turn on your flashers, follow the direction of the GM Wilkerson Funeral Establishment so that we can arrive safely and arrive back home the same way, amen. Amen. Come on, Jason, and play Nothing Else Matters. Amen.